Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Flesh Wound Farce, where we review and discuss your and our favorite comedy films. This is the world's first and only combination trivia host and professional wrestling announcer of Chilean descent that currently resides in Southern California, Ozzy V. And with me as always on this program, first in the Northern California Bay Area, world famous joke, sorry, I was going to say jovial joking juggler, Greg Larson. It's like my brain was going to say it, but it didn't like, it's almost like you have a car that's trying to make this, uh, this jump of a bridge, you know, the, the bridge, the drawbridge is opening, right? And the car is just trying to go as fast as it can, but it doesn't quite make it. So it kind of just falls into the river. That's where the word started to go. And then I decided <laughs> to just pull the car up and just put it on the other side of the road just kind of an office party way. moment precisely yes yes <laughs> if you're For not familiar not ladies and episode. gentlemen exactly go ahead watch the office christmas party <laughs> review how are you doing greg man i'm i'm uh doing well um was happy to to watch this film so yeah yeah life's good man how about yourself it is fantastic uh it's no secret that uh, Greg and I partake in the world of video games. And it's not like, oh, my God, these guys like Mario or something like. And yes, I understand I'm saying this wearing a shirt referencing Portal 2, but Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm sorry, Forbidden West. Yes. By the time. Listen, we're recording on February 13th at the time that this is out. We're going to be well into this game, and I am excited. Yeah. Also, no, with this, this game's going to be awesome. <laughs> also, with us, Flash Moon producer Todd. I thought this... you forgot about me. Nope. I was just curious if this were you're going to come in like ogre and yell nerds. I just tuned you out. I'll be honest. Oh, you do that so well. I now, do. ladies and gentlemen, this week we did have the pleasure of watching and we will be discussing and reviewing the film hot tub time machine released on march 26th 2010 by mgm united artists todd do you have the trailer ready um i do have the trailer ready but but uh, you normally say to play it <laughs> okay roll it A typical road trip weekend consists of partying, hooking up, and going wild. But in 2010, four friends will discover a new level of awesome. Go. All right. Look, 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 what are we going to do? You guys are terrible at quarters. Let's break into a school or uh, steal a cop car or something, huh? Do you have Ritalin? What? Guys, come look at this. You don't think it's a little weird? A bunch of guys just piling up in a big bathtub together? It's called male bonding, okay? Haven't you even seen Wild Hogs? Watch out, here I come. come, come, come. What the hell happened last night? Is there some kind of retro thing going on this weekend? There's something going on in here. Dude is rocking cassette player. Leg warmers. I'm sure there's a good explanation for all this. Jerry girl! Excuse me, miss. What color is Michael Jackson? Black. Manifest 86. I don't understand how we back in time. I'm so scared. Must be some kind of hot tub time machine. This March. This is a very special model that you have here. You know exactly what's going on here, don't you, old man? <laughs> Come on, it's the 80s, let's do what we want. Free love! Hey, let's get this party started. Mom? Forget the present. No! Why did I ever pick up with it? What was I thinking? Wow! And now the universe is giving me another shot. This is gonna be the best weekend like ever. Mm. 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 I feel pregnant. Change the future. There's money to be made here, man. We could invent iPods, Prius, Match.com, short rims. We could combine uh, Viagra with Twitter. What? 
Twitagra. Boom! And kick some past. You're breaking up with me? That's not how this happens. Do you know what happens to you? You get fat. I mean, like, fat. Oh! Hot tub time machine. Could I text you later? Wait, what? Are you online at all? I have no idea what you're saying. How do I get a hold of you? Come find me. That just sounds exhausting. Oh, man. So, we had Hot Tub Time Machine again, and this was directed by Steve Pink, written by Josh Held, Sean Andrews, Anders, rather, John Morris. Now, I'll go with some initial thoughts first and some interesting tidbits on the director and one of the screenplay writers. But initial thoughts for this one, when I first saw this movie, I loved it. And now seeing this again now, I love it even more. Diving in a little bit deeper, I love it even more. I'll explain that momentarily. Greg? Um, yeah, I feel like uh, it's kind of two weeks in a row. This uh, hits close to home. One for last week's was the world in general. Um, this one was personal uh, because I feel like Life's uh, gone away from the crazy party days and, uh, you know, what it might be like to go back to my Disney days living with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, um, it was it was fun. Like I seen this movie back in the day and uh, when this came out, um, but, you know, it was definitely fun to revisit much like, you know the the memory lane i went down after watching this movie thinking about all the old times uh yeah yeah it was just all around good times that's one of the things i really loved about this one that uh you don't really get a lot with other comedies is the fantasy aspect of it of mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. time machine and you know being able to uh right some wrongs for lack of a better term it's fun to then just let your mind wander right and when he breaks the fourth wall like in that moment where he's like it's like a hot tub time machine like <laughs> i died <laughs> just you know they're having fun you could tell this is a group of people just like this is stupid let's have fun you know it's stupid but at the same time well i'll i'll, I'll get into that in a second todd yeah. go with your initial thoughts first uh, yeah, I remember when this this got announced. Um, time time travel um, looked like a dumb, you know, eighty style comedy. I was all in and saw it then, loved it, and like still do. What also was great is you had the pairing of John Cusack, like a known star, with Rob Corddry and Craig Robinson from the Daily Show and The Office, respectively, where Rob Corddry really got the time to shine. And Craig Robinson also. Uh, what I really loved about it when I first saw it is how the whole story of or John Cusack's character story going on in the 80s felt like a John Cusack movie, you know. Mm -hmm. And what I found most fascinating about all that is the director, Steve Pink, was also a <clears throat> sorry, wrote the screenplay for Gross Point Blank and High Fidelity, also starring John Cusack. So I thought that was a wise choice to bring him in to get that vibe of a John Cusack movie, right? right. Now, here's what made this even better. Josh Held, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. I'm sorry, Josh Held, H-E-L-D, in addition to writing this, is also the co-creator for Cobra Kai. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So when knowing that going in and then catching all these 80s references it it just made me love the movie even more especially when you had uh lou rob cordry's character first be confronted by the ski patrol and he puts his hand close to like you know threatening him and an off-screen voice is hey it's that douchebag from karate kid three <laughs> and i lost it because this past season of cobra kai criticizes karate kid three and it's ah connection there but so if you haven't seen this movie but you enjoyed cobra kai you're gonna there's same same came from the same brain essentially there's a there's a bigger connection too but oh let's go <laughs> 
Go for it, Lee. Oh, yeah. It, that uh, um, William Zabka pops up in it. When? John, Johnny? He's the one. They're, when they're, like, betting and they're playing poker, he's, he's the only blonde guy from Karate Kid that shows up in the gambling scene. Holy cow. Yeah, I didn't be. realize that was him either. Well, okay. <laughs> he's basically I, playing that 80s character. I did catch the off-screen line some, I said at some point in the movie, put him in a body bag, which I guarantee had to have been a callback. Oh, yeah, it absolutely was. So that, okay. that's why I got such a huge kick. Again, like going in with the mindset like, oh, this guy knows his 80s. Like he loves his 80s, right? Yeah. So uh, in terms of a favorite, <laughs> I know it was early on. But I enjoyed the movie from start to finish. Don't get me wrong. A tons of parts in this movie made me laugh. But I think one that brought me to tears the most. A, the Karate Kid 3 line got me pretty good. But I don't think one got me as hard as a line said early on when they're going to pick up Lou at the beginning of the film. And the nephew played by, sorry, I didn't go over the stars here. John Cusack, Rob Cordry, Kirk Robinson, and Clark Duke. I was going to say, I was going to say, you, you Ernie Hudson did earlier. Name everyone, oh, but he yeah. gets left. I apologize. <laughs> Poor Clark also Duke. Was rated R with a runtime of 101 minutes. Get that out of the way. Clark Duke says the line. Remember when I remember when I was 12 and he tried to bite me? With Cusack's response, well, to be fair, you had it coming. <laughs> 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 Just I, and I love Cusack's delivery with everything because he he seemed like the anchor to let Rob Cordry and, and Craig's Rob Craig Robinson's be the, you know, fuel the humor aspect of it. And then Cusack got his own moment of time to shine when he got, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but the things that happened to him and the things that he had in his stash and going through everything and mm -hmm. was a good, good time to, Rather, it was humorous to see a John Cusack movie, rather, when he's at this age. Right. You know what I mean? Like him going through like the teen John Cusack at like 50. And it, again, it, not really spoiling, but for those that haven't seen in the movie, it explains that to everybody else, they appear their 18 year old selves. So. Which, by the way, Lou's haircut is exactly like Bruce Dickinson, lead singer of the band Iron Maiden, who was on his shirt. I just thought, yeah. I thought that was a that was a neat detail. Is that because, like, you know, everybody you see people wear Iron Maiden shirts all the time, but him having the same exact hairstyle as the lead singer of the band that he's wearing the shirt of is that's a nice touch. Yeah, it's pretty spot on. I want to defer my favorite uh, to Todd first because I have a few. Uh, from this and and I just uh, I I need to say a couple of these. So yeah, I got I yeah. got my list too. I'm sure we all do. Well, I'm gonna yeah. go with one, and it hasn't changed, and it still busts me up every time. It's a throwaway line. It goes over a lot of people's heads when they first see each other, and they're all standing looking in the mirror. And John Cusack says to Craig Robinson, "He's like, you look like kid and play." And <laughs> Craig Robinson <laughs> no sells it. And he's just like, "That's two people." <laughs> that line every time when he says that's two people, I, I lose it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, the movie had so many great one liners, and that's what I loved about this film. Um, I, I'm a sucker for those, but like when Rob Corddry, he's being accused that uh, he was he was uh trying to harm himself at one point, and he goes. If I were trying to do that, I'd go out like a badass with a shotgun to the dick. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that, I was like, I'm not sure how effective that would be, but like, that's funny as hell. So like, <laughs> there was that. And then um, there's a, a, a scenario. Um, gosh, there's so many I, I have on here. Um, and one's kind of a spoiler, so I'll leave it out. But there's there's a moment where um, 
they're all kind of with him and such. And and um, oh, what's what's the kid's name? The younger one, the, the Ernie Duke. Hudson of the movie. Yes. Um, so he goes, uh, hey, if if he kills himself, can we go home? Like, <laughs> 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 like I don't, I'm, I'm over this. Like, let's go. Like, it was such a great line. And and then last one that I I'm sorry, it is slightly spoiler ish. So I'll leave out the context of it. But when you watch it, when he says, it's like Gary Coleman's forearm. My God. Like, <laughs> I died. There were so many great moments of this film that, yeah, like they're, all the one-liners, all the moments were, were just, yeah, they were a lot of fun. Uh, all right. Sorry. I was going to say, I'm not, there's, there's too many little moments, so I'm just going to blank in it. Anytime Crispin Glover's on on the screen, and yeah. it's also perfect casting because it's a time travel movie, and but yeah, but I could see that about Except, every yeah. movie. Crispin Glover, no, no, all, it, no, 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 okay, he's always ahead. awesome. That's all I'm saying. But he, yeah, but he's awesome even more in this. <laughs> when you have a time travel movie that's again featuring Crispin Glover, who is in two of the one of the most two of the most popular one. time travel movies. One. Was he in the second one? Nope. And that's why that law, they, he sued him because they used his likeness. They hired uh, someone else. Okay. I get it. Uh, anyway, yeah. Still. There you go. One. Anyhow. De- definitely recommend it. And as Greg had mentioned uh, last week with the uh, Idiocracy, as that would be one he'd want to buy. This would be one I'd want to purchase. I'd want to get the hopefully check out a commentary track on this just just because it seems like it must have been a good time and i want to know if it would be revealed how many of rob cordry's lines were improvised right like greg when you said the line like i take it like a man shotgun to the dick (laughs) that is one of his daily show lines when he was a correspondent on the daily show that used to be like his shtick so it was so much fun seeing him especially certain teases of things happening and his reactions to things like and he would like get excited when there would be a tragedy about to happen that right. was humorous to see especially like him holding his arms up like he was victorious like that almost like <laughs> It was funny, but at the same time, I almost felt like I saw myself because I felt I think I would do the same thing. Because you're not you're not doing anything messed up. You're just like, this is destiny. It's bound to happen. So like you get to witness destiny. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So again, with this, that was not possible to rate it anything less than a five from me. Uh, Purchase it if you can. That's my humble opinion. Greg? Yeah, this is a five as well. Um, I was going to say this is a rent until you mentioned the commentary track thing. Like, well, if you can rent. Uh-oh, like, it doesn't have commentary, does it, Todd? No, I, I was going to. I was saving that. Oh, uh, like, uh, well, then rent it. <laughs> See, this is the <laughs> frustrating is, thing. I'd really enjoy like I really enjoy this film, but I think it would be one that like I could watch from time to time. I'd be happy to rent it again. You know, um, but uh, I don't see myself watching it frequently. Yeah, I watched this one not too to long ago, actually. And Both of them. <laughs> um, so I'm, so not, I'm not talking about the sequel. I know. Well, this one, I give a five. <laughs> there you go. Do you, you happen to have the blu-ray dvd that you could tell us what special what it, features it does what have. is on it i can't well first i know the big thing for me is there's a what's it called there is crispin glover one arm bellhop that's a featurette of course it has both theatrical and unrated it has a production featurette acting like idiots huh. and i'm sure this title has to be ironic chevy chase the nicest guy in hollywood <laughs> <laughs> uh okay and deleted so, scenes got it now last week we started looking at the imdb reviews for fun now this has an average rating of 6.4 with 
170,000 IMDb users, with 28% at the highest point giving it a 7, 24.4 giving it a 6, 14.8 giving it an 8, 5.7% giving it a 10. Uh, which leads me to say that 9,791 people that are IMDb users are cool people and know what they're talking about. <laughs> I don't know if you guys would disagree, but anyhow. I don't know about cool, but <laughs> we agree with that. You no, know, overall, it wasn't like amazing movie if you're trying to be all like hoity toity about it, but if you're talking like did I have a freaking good time? Which is what movies are all about. Like, yeah, especially comedies, right, especially exactly. comedies. Yeah. So there you go. Definitely check it out. Is it streaming anywhere, Todd? It. The only place it's streaming is on the, uh, the TBS or TNT app, app maybe both. Oh, and I'm pretty God. sure you definitely that includes commercials. <laughs> well, you're definitely not getting the unrated version. That's well, yeah, but you get like the TV versions, yeah, don't you? Probably. Well, I don't know how TNT does it, but. Yeah, probably. I guarantee like you don't get the same version from that HBO shows, no, whatever, if they had that opportunity. But anyhow, if you see it, if ladies and gentlemen, if you happen to see it appear on one of your streaming services, make sure to catch it before it goes away. Fair? Fair. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back next week with a new episode. That is world famous juggler Greg and Flesh Room producer Todd. And I'm Ozzy V. See you next week. One second. Right here. Sorry, Ozzy. Sorry, oh, Ozzy, sorry. to cut you off. I do yeah. have a thought. I apologize. Okay. I just have to say, in context of this movie, I am not sure what shade Michael Jackson was in 1986 <laughs> when they mentioned this movie. Because this is, it's a bit in the movie. And I looked it up. Hold on. Okay. He's starting to to lighten up a bit. So I think they should have rewound the movie a couple years. To make that joke hit. Yeah. Now hold on hold on a second though. Now if I can just jump in here for a second. Because I want to look at the albums. So I'm looking at I'm looking at bad nineteen eighty seven, right? Oh yeah, that's easy. I'm looking at that album cover. And if I were, if I were just to look at that album cover, and someone were to ask me, "Hey, is would you say he's black or white?" Black. That's yeah, yeah. That, but that, that was the answer. That, the, that answer. There's no, but that was that, that, but that was that was how the girl answered, though. Yeah, yeah. That's so, that, like you can't like it's that's what made it so so good is that like it wasn't like a black, it was a black. Like, yeah, that's fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know okay. what I mean? Like, that's why. And, and like, yeah, somebody could say like, well, you know, she could just be questioning because she's weird that she's weirded out that some random dudes ask her. But at the same time, knowing, I mean, again, this is one of the guys that co-created Cobra Kai. I'm sure that right. that level of detail was probably in the script. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. And especially directed by, by a guy who, uh, wrote screenplays for John Cusack movies. I got, I just got to think that's why I'd want to hope that there was a commentary track because I want to be curious if th things were said specifically for these reasons. It couldn't just be me BSing. Yeah. I, I do that a lot. Apparently. What? <laughs> that's, that's not funny. <laughs> All right, we've had this outro go on long enough. We will be back next week with a new episode here on Flesh Wound Fars. Thank you for joining us.